Hello everyone, this is Nelson from the College Panda, and you're watching the third video in a series on how to use a TI-84 calculator effectively on the SAT math section. Now what I want to cover in this video is graphing, and I know a lot of you may already be familiar with graphing, after all it is a graphing calculator, but I wanted to cover it for those who aren't. So just to dive right in, to start graphing functions, what you're gonna do is hit this y equals button in the top left, and this will bring up a lot of blank functions that you can use for your function graphs. So let's say that the first function that we wanna graph is a simple line, y equals two x minus three, and when I input this in my calculator, what I expect to see is a straight line with a slope of two. And when I press this graph button on the right, that is indeed what we see. So let's say that we wanna sort of zoom in on this center portion of the graph near the origin. Well, what I can do is adjust the window. So hitting window, which is the second button here, I can sort of adjust the frame, let's say x min and max to be negative five and five, y min, y max, negative five, five. And when I hit graph again, notice that we've sort of zoomed in. This x min to the left is negative five, x max is five, y min is negative five, and the y max on the axis is five. So the next thing that I wanna show you is how to calculate a certain value. So over here, we'll just do it by hand first. When x equals four, well, y equals two times four minus three, which is equal to five. One way I can do that on the calculator is by going to second, and then this trace button to access the calc menu. And I wanna calculate a value. So hitting one, it brings up x equals, I'll type in four, and this brings me to x equals four, y equals five. So indeed, we got five from the graph. So other things that I can do from the calc menu, I can also find a zero, and a zero is just basically where this line crosses the x-axis. So we can sort of estimate it just by looking at it. it seems to be 1.5, but to verify, we'll go to second calc again, and we'll go to zero. Now it's gonna ask me for a left bound, and what you wanna do is move the left and right arrow button so that you see this cursor on your screen. So the cursor is right there. And you wanna to go to the left of the zero, press enter. When it asks for a right bound, you want to go to the right of the zero. And guess, you don't have to guess, and indeed it gives me 1.5 as the zero. So what you wanna do is basically surround what you're looking for with the left and right bounds. What else can I do? I can also find a minimum and maximum. That's not so useful here because we're not dealing with something like a parabola where we might find the minimum or maximum for, for the vertex but we'll show you that in a minute. We can also find the intersection. So let's just enter another plot like x squared minus 5x. This will be our parabola. And we'll adjust the window to be what it was originally. And when I hit graph, we should also see a parabola. Now, if we want to find the vertex, notice that it's kind of off the screen. So what we need to do is adjust the window so that we can actually see it. So I'll put the Y min to be negative 15, and hopefully now we'll be able to see sort of that minimum. Nope, still can't. So I'll do negative 20. And again, this is all trial and error when you're adjusting the window, you just kind of have to play it by ear. So 
let's use this calc menu to get to the minimum and let's try to find the vertex. So my cursor is on the line, which is not what I want. I want the cursor to be on the parabola because that's the graph that we're focusing on. So when the cursor is on the line, you just have to press the down arrow to move to the parabola. And now I don't know if you can see that, but the cursor is blinking right there. And again, when I ask for the left bound, go to the left of the vertex and then right bound, I wanna go a little to the right of the vertex, press enter, don't need to guess. And it gives me 2.4999 repeating, which is 2.5. Sometimes it won't give you the exact value because it's approximating from a graph, but you can pretty much be assured that it is 2.5. And then the Y coordinate is negative 17.25. So these are the coordinates of our vertex. So going back to our calc menu, we won't find the maximum here, we don't need to, but if we had a parabola that was an upside down U, you might use the maximum to find the vertex in that case. So the next one is intersect, and this is to find where two graphs intersect. And this is really useful for when you're dealing with a systems of equations uh, question, so imagine that I have my two previous graphs as a system of equations and I needed to find their solution. Well, their solution is just their intersection point, the point at which they both cross at the same time. So to do that on our calculator, we'll go intersect and our cursor is on the line. So that's our first curve. So we'll press enter. Now, when it asks for our second curve, that will be our parabola. And notice that it automatically jumps down to the parabola. So we'll just press enter. So basically we're selecting the two curves that we're working with. Sometimes you might have like five graphs on the screen and you only wanna select two of them. So pressing enter when the cursor is on the graph is the way to do that. So I'll press enter and now it says guess. We don't have to guess and the intersection point is negative one, negative five. So when it comes to a parabola, you might also notice that there's an intersection point up here, which is sort of off the calculator screen. If we also wanna find that intersection point, you know, our second solution, we would need to first adjust our window and move this to 18, move the Y max to 18. And this way our window gets a bit wider. We see more of the graph and there you go. You can see that the intersection point is right there. So let's say I wanna find that intersection point. Well, I'll sort of repeat the same process. I'll go to intersect. First curve, our cursor is on the line. Check, press enter. Second curve, our cursor jumped to the parabola automatically. So we'll just press enter since that's correct. Now it asks us for a guess. And previously I told you guys that guess is not really important. Well, now it is important because we don't want this intersection point. We already found that one. We want this one. So what guess tells the calculator is sort of which intersection point we want. So if we guess on this end, it'll calculate what the point is there. And if we guess an X value on this end, it'll give us the intersection point over here. So just looking at the axis, we can sort of guess that the intersection point is around like seven or eight. So I'll just type in seven, X equals seven, that's our guess. And it will find the intersection point towards that end. And indeed the intersection is at 813. So the two solutions for this system of equations is negative 1, negative 5, 8, and 13. And so that's pretty much all you have to know for the SAT in terms of graphing on your calculator. The last thing that I'll mention is that you can actually turn these functions on and off depending on 
whether you want to graph them or not. So by highlighting this equal sign up here, I can press enter. And now the equal sign is no longer having this dark black background. And now when I graph, it should only graph the parabola. So if you're storing a lot of functions, you can turn them on and off. So now I shouldn't see anything, but yeah, you can just turn them on and off depending on whether you want to graph them. That's it for this video. This has been Nelson with thecollegepanda.com. Hope you found this useful. Stay tuned for more.